Hey everybody, it's Teresa here of Larkin Design and welcome back to a collaborative challenge that I'm doing called the Create With Me Challenge and I'm working with two other YouTubers named Dolly Boyd and Becky Back of My Creative Life and today we have a sketch for you. We're going to be working with this sketch and that's the layout that I want to, to, that I want to share with you today. So I have a photo from a couple of years ago where Alan and I traveled with the kids to Savannah. I've done a lot of layouts about that trip recently. And um, then I'm also working with some product from Pink, from Pink Fresh Studio from the Simple and Sweet collection. And so I've sort of planned out a little bit what I wanna do here in this layout and laid everything out just to get a feel for where I need things to go. I also have some cardstock from Felicity Jane and from Basil, and that's gonna be my starting point today. So the sketch showed some diagonal lines, and the wonderful thing about using sketches in a mixed media layout is that you can incorporate the elements from the sketch in any way that you want to. And so I thought that I would use the diagonal lines as the guidance for my gesso. And I wanna do the gesso on the background because I wanna break up some of that um, salmon color that the background is. And I also want some of my um, stencil work to pop against that background. So I've laid down the gesso using a really rough textured brush and then I have this wood grain stencil. This is a Mod Podge stencil and it has an adhesive backing on it, but you use it just like any other stencil. And I'm using these Art Alchemy paints from Prima. I've totally been digging those lately. And I'm gonna mix it here with modeling paste. So you could probably use these paints in with a stencil, but they're very runny, right? They're runny like paint. So I'm adding modeling paste here so they have a little bit more thickness and are able to work with the stencils without flowing underneath the stencil. It's not so much a concern with this stencil, but the next one that I use, it, will, it would be a concern. Um, so I'm using, there's a rectangular element, ver rectangular vertical element in the sketch, and I've reinterpreted that using this stencil here. And then I'm gonna use another stencil. This is an old Mr. Huey's stencil from Studio Calico. Does anybody remember those? Like, um, I still have those. I do not throw out stencils ever, I keep them and um, love them so much. And so again, I'm gonna mix another color with the modeling paste so that it's a little bit thicker. Now, I will tell you, pay attention when you mix your paints, especially these um, sort of sparkly metallic paints, when you mix those with other media, what happens to them? And so, what happened here is that it's not as sparkly and it's not as vibrant. And it's a totally okay that it does that. Just know that when you mix these paints with other media, when you mix them with water, when you put them down on your page, if you put them down on gesso, it's gonna impact how they look. And so also notice how I have reinterpreted another one of the squares in the layout as a stencil element here. And now my background is done. Like that's all I'm gonna do with my background here. And I know that I want to trim this down a little bit. There is a border on the sketch and I'm debating whether or not to make this layout with a border and um, so you'll have to wa finish watching the process video so that you'll find out if I kept it bordered, if I made it bordered or not. 
for now I just wanted to trim off that scalloped edge so that I had a, a more accurate picture of the scale and where my products were going on the page. So I also took a few artistic liberties because the sketch shows a lot of circle, circular elements on the page. And I've repeated a couple of circles and I've also not done some circular elements as well or done some non-circular elements. Um, and that's the beauty of a sketch, right? You can absolutely take the elements that the sketch shows and reinterpret them or reimagine them because the sketch is your jumping off point. And so I have a couple of embellishment groupings here that I'm adding. And this is just, this is just instinctual, I think. How different people group their embellishments is really a matter of how you personally do it. And um, for me, I like the design concept of contrast. So if I'm putting a circular shape, I want to put a rectangular shape next to it. If I'm using a bright colored shape, I want to put a more neutral colored shape next to it. And you'll notice this play here. I use black and white as neutral. And so I have in the lower right hand corner of the photo, I have that big lemon slice, which is round. And then I have a black and white label, which is neutral. And this is the art of balancing contrast and texture and shape. Um, and that's just how I do it, right? And so you're welcome to, to scrap with that and use that technique yourself. I, I find it simplifies the decision making and makes me less um, indecisive when I'm working with my embellishments. Because you could sit there for three days and try to figure out what embellishments to use where. Um, and that's fun too if you like to do that. I, I've sat around with layouts sitting on my desk for a week at a time. I don't see anything at all wrong with that. <laughs> Enjoy your process. Um, so then I did decide to use the border. And here's what drove my decision to use this border. I'm gonna use red line tape here. I used a lot of red line tape in this layout because of the mixed media. And it just has such a great bond. Um, but here's what drove the decision to go ahead and make a border around the page. I'm gonna border it with the white cardstock. And the reason why is because the sketch showed a couple of design elements in the upper right hand corner, just a couple of circles up there. And I thought that it would be cool to have those circles pop off of the salmon colored background and tie in with that border. And so you'll see how I'm going to do that here. I've got, here again, I've got a circle, I've got a rectangle and I've got another circle here, just making this cluster visually interesting. It is at this stage a group of three. Um, and so odd numbers, when you're doing your embellishment clusters, odd numbers are always a good decision. And so now you can see how I trimmed off a couple of the pieces and it runs over that border and it makes that border a part of the page now. The elements on the page now have a relationship to that border. And, and, it, and now it works and now it makes sense to me. I don't know, you could totally put that border on there and not have anything touching it or not have anything. Um, and that would be okay too. There's no right or wrong. You know, I can, I can give you design concepts all day long. I can tell you why I decided to do this. In the end, there isn't any right or wrong. So um, just a couple of finishing details for this layout. I thought that the wood grain sort of dropped off of the face of the earth onto the gesso background. It was kind of an abrupt stop. 
um, if I were to redo this or if I were to make to give you advice if you want to do this layout as well I would say blend that green stencil out a little more instead of letting it end with the stencil um, because it it's a line up there <laughs> that kind of felt a little bit distracting to me. And so I added these enamel dots at the top and the bottom. And I don't know, is it, am I the only one that struggles with putting down enamel dots? Like I love them to bits and I think they're awesome and fun little pops of color. <laughs> but I struggle, I fight with them sometimes. Um, but I did use some of the green ones. Those enamel dots are from Simple Stories. They're from the Summer Vibes collection from last year, not this year's collection. Um, and then since I introduced those enamel dots at the top and the bottom of the stencil, I decided to repeat them in a couple of other places around the layout. Um, just for a little more color, a little more pop on that gesso background, and um, it just because they're fun. <laughs> All of this layout was just really fun to do, and hopefully you'll notice here how that background adds a little bit more visual interest the stencils added a bit of visual interest here to the layout and they give you something to to look around as your eye goes around the page um, I'm gonna add a little bit of journaling here and I'm just I'm balancing here there's a little bit of handwriting in black and white at the upper right hand corner and then I'm balancing that here with the journaling at the lower left-hand corner. That's what drove the decision for the journaling here. And with that, the layout is done. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you will check out the other ladies. I will link their YouTube channels below and you can see how they've tackled this challenge. And I will see you back here again soon. Bye-bye.